Welcome back. Through our videos, we were trying to understand semiconductors more closely. For that purpose, few mathematical concepts were also introduced. In this video, we will make use of those mathematical concepts to understand more clearly the physics of semiconductors. This session will be more mathematical. So it is advisable to have a pen and paper to note down the steps so that all the concepts can be clear to you by practice. The concept that we had seen in our previous video can be brought back into our thoughts. The first one was Fermi function which gives you the probability of finding an electron in a particular available energy state. It was mathematically represented by the equation f of e equals 1 upon 1 plus exponential of e minus ef by kt where ef is an energy level known as the Fermi level. And the concept was Fermi level is the level where the probability of finding an electron is 50 percentage or 1 by 2. As usual, the K is the Boltzmann's constant and capital T is the temperature in Kelvin. Another concept was regarding the density of states. We are aware of the fact that electrons cannot be found everywhere or electrons can occupy only few states, available states and density of states gives us the idea about the number of available states per energy per volume. This can be mathematically represented as n of e equals 4 pi by h cube times 2 into effective mass m star all raised to 3 by 2 into the square root of energy. This mathematical equation, the derivation of this mathematical equation is above and over our scope of discussion. So it is the fact that just understand that the density of states can be mathematically represented by this given mathematical equation. The primary aim of bringing in these two concepts, the concept of Fermi function and the concept of density of state was to compute number of electrons. Number of electrons can be found using these two concepts by the equation n small n which is the number of electrons is equal to integral e c to infinity n of e into f of e de. This will give the number of electrons in the conduction band. 
even the integral limits for the integration shows that this will give the number of electrons in the conduction band. EC is the energy level at the bottom of the conduction band or in another words from EC energy level EC till infinity we can consider it as the conduction band. Now the question arises why we are studying about the number of electrons or why we are interested in finding number of electrons. Only if we find the number of electrons in the conduction band we can compute the current that is flowing in the semiconductor. And only if we understand about the current in the semiconductor we can understand the essence of the working of devices using the semiconductor. We shall also bring back few ideas which we had discussed earlier that will help us in our further discussion. One is regarding the energy band diagram. We know it is constituted of conduction band and valence band which is separated by an energy band gap denoted by EG. We also saw classification of semiconductors based on the alignment of the bottom of conduction band and the top of valence band. If the alignment falls in a single line those type of semiconductors can be classified under direct semiconductors. Whenever there is a movement of electron between the bands only heat energy is produced. Another type of semiconductors is an indirect semiconductor where the bottom of the conduction band is not in line with the top of the valence band. Here whenever there is a electron exchange between the bands light energy is also produced. As we move on we will consider the conduction band and valence band or we will represent the conduction band and valence band using single line rather than a band as shown in the right side of the screen the conduction band will start from EC upwards and the valence band will be from the energy level EV downwards. Also from our previous discussion we had plotted a graph of density of states versus energy in case of electrons which will have the shown shape or in another words from the mathematical equation we can clearly tell density of states n of e is proportional to the square root of energy as the energy increases the number of available states for the electrons to occupy also increases. The starting point of this graph is EC which is the bottom of the conduction band because we know that below that it is the energy band gap. So in our previous equation of density of states 
we incorporate this concept. So there is a change in the given equation now which is inside the square root earlier it was just e now we have changed it to square root of e minus ec because the conduction band starts from ec until infinity we are continuously discussing about electrons but regarding holes whatever concepts that we have discussed until now is applicable we will always explain every idea with respect to the electrons and then we will correlate it with that of holes if we think of density of state versus energy of holes earlier it was that of electrons the mathematical expression can be or is very similar only difference is that here the effective mass that we consider is the effective mass of the holes which is denoted by the notation m suffix h star and also inside the square root we have e suffix v minus e where e v is the top of the valence band and from the graph plotted for the density of states versus energy of holes we see that while the energy decreases we have more available states for the holes in the valence band all explanation for electrons is satisfied by holes in a contrary manner so keep in mind as we have density of states for electrons in conduction band there will be density of states for holes in valence band now we will start from the basics that we discussed the very beginning in case of silicon semiconductor the energy band gap is 1.1 electron volt we had done a math to find the energy that atoms get from thermal energy at room temperature which is only 0.026 electron volt and at that point we had stated that this energy this thermal energy at room temperature is not sufficient for the electrons from the valence band to escape to the conduction band only if the electrons escapes to the conduction band we will have electrons for movement and that will be constituting the current so by the thermal energy due to the room temperature no electrons are going to escape but still at room temperature there are free electrons in the conduction band the reason can be mathematically explained using the equation for number of electrons n where we find that the number of electrons is depending upon the probability and also the available energy density of state or available energy states and that explains the fact that there will be free electrons in the conduction band 
we will try to get some mathematical insight about the concentration of electrons and holes electrons in conduction band and holes in valence band so we will start from the equation for number of electrons n which is equal to integral e c to infinity n of e f of e d and we know that n of e is mathematically represented by 4 pi by h cube 2 times effective mass of electrons m e star all raised to 3 by 2 into root of e minus e c similarly we know that the probability of the fermi function f e is equal to 1 by 1 plus exponential of e minus e f by k t we are substituting these two terms in our equation for number of electrons so we get a bigger equation don't worry about the size of the equation because we are trying to make it simple by considering few facts this big equation that we get by direct substitution can be simplified and written as n is equal to nc f suffix 1 by 2 f suffix 1 by 2 is actually a notation for Fermi integral of order 1 by 2 which is an integral over a function x inside the bracket there is the function or the variable upon which this function is to be acting here in place of x we are having ef minus ec by kt we will see more detail on this equation what is nc nc is the effective density of state in conduction band this is found using the concept that at the bottom of the conduction band what are the number of states available that is what is known as the effective density of state or we represent the entire density of state in the conduction band with this effective density of state which is actually the density of states in the bottom of conduction band this can be mathematically represented as nc is equal to 2 pi effective mass of electrons m e star k t by h square all raised to 3 by 2 h is Planck's constant and k is Boltzmann's constant similarly for holes effective density of states in valence band which will be the density of state at the top of the valence band unit is centimeter raised to minus 3 or per centimeter cube or per volume as in the case of electrons and mathematically it can be represented as nv is equal to 2 times 2 pi effective mass of holes which is mh star kt by h square all raised to 3 by 2 so make, for making the equation for number of electrons or number of holes number of electrons in conduction band we are introducing a new 
terminology which is the effective density of state which is represented by NC in case of the conduction band and in case of valence band it will be NV. So keep that in mind and now we will move deep into understand about the concentration of carriers. Now, uh, as earlier, we are having the conduction band EC and valence band EV. At the center of or at the middle of these two bands or in the middle of the energy band gap, we will consider that layer as EI which is the intrinsic energy level or the center. Now if the Fermi level, Fermi level as I had mentioned earlier, it is a level where the probability of finding electrons is 50 percentage. If the Fermi level is in the upper half, there will be more electrons in the conduction band than holes in the valence band. So the majority carrier will be electrons. If the majority carrier is electron, then that type of semiconductor is an n-type semiconductor. And as you all know, how can you make n-type semiconductor? By doping with pentavalent impurities, which will give more elect free electrons. Similarly, if the Fermi level is in the bottom half, below the center of the energy band gap, then there is more holes in valence band than electrons in conduction band. In other words, the number of holes will be more than the number of electrons. This type of semiconductor is called the p-type semiconductors. And how you get the p-type semiconductor? By doping with trivalent impurities. Now consider if the Fermi level is at the exact center, which means EI is equal to EF. So the number of electrons in conduction band is same as number of holes in valence band in this case. This is the intrinsic semiconductor or semiconductor in its pure form. So based upon the positioning of the Fermi level, what is Fermi level? The level where we can find the probability of finding electrons is 50 percentage or 1 by 2. If the Fermi level is in the upper half, the semiconductor is N type. If it is in the lower half, it is P type semiconductor. And if it is at the exact center, then it is intrinsic semiconductor. Now we will move back to the mathematical conceptualization we had we were doing. We add simplified the equation for finding number of electrons as n is equal to nc f suffix 1 by 2 
which is the fermi integral earlier that can be further simplified by considering the fermi function f of e in this case since we are uh, doing it for electrons we can call it as f of ec ec stands for the conduction band or the energy states in the conduction band is equal to 1 by 1 plus exponential of ec minus ef by kt what i have done is just replaced in place of e with ec in this equation if we consider the exponential term is very large then it can be approximated as exponential minus of ec minus ef by kt which is equal to e raised to minus ec minus ef by kt there is a minus sign missing in the first part of it so uh, you have to read it as the f of ec is approximately equal to exponential of minus ec minus ef by kt which is correctly represented as e raised to minus ec minus ef by kt now we consider this in our earlier equation of n now we are representing it as n0 is equal to nc into f of ec substituting f of ec we will get concentration of electrons in conduction band represented by n0 is equal to nc which is the effective density of state in the conduction band into e raised to minus of ec minus ef by kt that you have to keep in mind that final equation similarly for holes for holes the concentration of holes in valence band the basic equation is p0 we represent holes by p electrons by n p0 is equal to nv into 1 minus f of ev making use of the same concept of having the, uh, considering the exponential factor or the term very large we can approximate it to e raised to minus ef minus ev by kt so that we could write an equation for concentration of holes in valence band as p0 is equal to n suffix v which is the effective density mass density of states effective density of states in the valence band into e raised to minus ef minus ev by kt So what we are doing is like we are studying regarding electrons in detail and then correlating it to holes because whatever concepts are applicable for electrons is applicable for holes too. Now some relationship for the concentration of electrons and holes in case of extrinsic semiconductors the basic equation that we had derived earlier the number of electrons is n0 
is equal to nc e raised to minus ef minus ef by kt similarly p0 the number of of the concentration of holes in the valence band is equal to nv e raised to minus of ef minus ev by kt these two expressions that we had derived earlier is being used to find the product of number the concentration of electrons and concentration of holes n0 p0 by directly multiplying what we get nc nv e raised to minus ec minus ev by kt now what is ec minus ev ec is the bottom of the conduction band and ev is the top of the valence band so what is in between in between is the energy band gap so ec minus ev can be replaced by e suffix g which is the energy band gap so we get the final equation n0 p0 is equal to nc nv e raised to minus of eg by kt this is in case of the extrinsic semiconductor now if we consider similar condition similar equations in case of intrinsic semiconductor only difference that i have made is in place of ef i have substituted with ei because in our figure we had seen ei is equal to ef in in case of intrinsic semiconductor or in other words the fermi level is in the exact center of the energy band gap so the number of electrons in the intrinsic semiconductor ni for extrinsic we had denoted it as n0 here it is ni ni is equal to nc e raised to minus of ec minus ei by kt similarly pi is equal to nv e raised to minus of ei minus ev by kt similar to the extrinsic semiconductor we are going to find the product of the concentration of concentrations of electrons and holes we'll get exactly ni pi is equal to nc minus nv into e raised to minus of ec minus ev which can be substituted by eg all divided by kt so we get very similar relationship ni pi is equal to nc nv e raised to minus eg by kt but we know as we had discussed earlier in case of intrinsic semiconductor number of electrons in the conduction band is equal to number of holes in the valence band mathematically it can be represented as ni is equal to pi therefore the equation can be rewritten as ni square in place of pi i have written ni so ni square is equal to nc nv raised to minus eg by kt or in other words ni is equal to square root of nc nv e raised to minus of eg by 2 kt number of electrons in the conduction band of 
intrinsic semiconductor Ni is equal to root of NCNV e raised to minus Eg by 2 Kt. This will lead us to summarize our discussion over the concentration of electrons and holes in the conduction band and valence band respectively of both intrinsic semiconductor and extrinsic semiconductor as N0 P0 is equal to Ni square. With these results, with the previous results, we can even further derive an expression for electron concentration in extrinsic semiconductor, electron concentration in the conduction band of an extrinsic semiconductor in terms of electron concentration in the intrinsic semiconductor as N0 is equal to Ni e raised to Ef minus Ei by Kt. Similarly, whole concentration of an extrinsic semiconductor or concentration in the valence band of the extrinsic semiconductor will be equal to Ni e raised to Ei minus Ef by Kt. Our mathematical derivations have given us three relationships which we will be using in our further discussion. The first assignment, the first question of the first assignment is to find the representation of N0 is equal to Ni e raised to Ef minus Ei by Kt and P0 is equal to Ni e raised to Ei minus Ef by Kt from our previous relationships. So that will be the first assignment in our discussion on semiconductors. So with that we will uh, currently stop the present discussion and in our future session we will move on to understand more about semiconductors through the headings excess carriers in semiconductors and also we will uh, find time to just summarize whatever that we had discussed until now so that the basement of our learning regarding semiconductors is strong and then we will try to work out few problems that will also help you to fix the concepts that we had discussed so far and that will help you in continuing the study regarding semiconductors. So let's stop for the time being. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.